Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. We actually forgot to record an intro to this Mercedes AMG SL63 sound system demo. So we got all the good stuff, the, the driving, the music impressions, everything like that, but no static intro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in the intro from our EQS review. It should have a very similar infotainment screen. A lot of the settings are the same. So we'll throw that in there. You'll see how everything works. And then if you just came to listen to the music, go ahead and click through in the chapters just like usual and you'll get your usual stuff. Now we always do these tests with lossless uncompressed wave files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system. However, this car will not take my USB drives for some reason. And I know it's not a, an inherent Mercedes problem because we just had a GLE 53 and the USB drives worked fine. I've tried three different drives. I've tried every different USB port in this car and two different USB-C to A adapters. None of those will work. I go over to USB and it simply says, no device found. And after about 20 seconds of the USB being plugged in, it says something along the lines of USB error or something like that. So I don't know why I can't play my songs through there, but we should be fairly lossless here going through CarPlay connected into the car via wire. And I do still have my Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults, just as the audio engineers intended. So let's take a look at those now. Obviously a giant screen here in the EQS. Let's go to sound settings here. Start off with sound profiles, and I wanna come back to that in a minute into this personal sound profile, but you've got options for pure and 3D sound. Those are pretty dramatic. So let me turn it up, play both of those. Pure gives you a very forward-facing sound stage. It's coming right at you from the front and it's more true to the recording sound. 3D is adding a large artificial element and making the sound like it's coming from all around you. Below that, you've got adjustments for bass, mid-range, and treble EQ. Once the music picks up a little bit, I'll get to those. You have front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance that you can move around. Very satisfying haptic control there. Reset. Then a sound focus, you can optimize the sounds for either all seats, front or rear, and a loudness normalization. So this is going to adjust the level of music as you get going faster, there's more ambient noise, make it always sound like it's at the same volume. All right, let's go through the EQ now. for audio adjustment. And we're gonna do most of our testing in pure, but there will be a few times during the on-road section that I switch into 3D. But let me point out the personal sound profile too. This is something really cool that Mercedes does. And I think more audio manufacturers and brands should start adhering, kind of doing something like this. It allows you to customize the, the EQ exactly how you want it and sort of walks you through a, a tutorial. So let me show you here. Click this, I'm gonna click this gear icon and reconfigure. You can create your own personal sound profile for your Burmester audio system using this configuration assistant. Some new tracks too. Set your personal comfort volume. So I guess this is just comfortable music listening. Seems pretty comfortable to me. Obviously some more high-end sounds. Digging these new tracks. Set the sound which you feel find to be balanced, so if you don't want a little more high end. I'm sorry, that's a little more low end. You'd think small instrument would be high end. I usually like a little bit more bass. I'm gonna go just slightly to the left. Set a volume which you find to be low. Whoops, and I just accidentally clicked something. find that to be a low volume, I guess. Is that the sound you, which, and so you can kind of do the same thing with the low volume stuff. Desired volume for the displayed instruments. You 
you can have the kind of mid-rangey stuff come through a little stronger, the bass, or the, the drums, or a little less, or like a little extra there. Then you can switch between bass, speech, intensive, and brilliant. Oh, okay, I think the car might have just shut off. I like intensive. Set the area which the sound should come from. More surrounding. Yeah. And if you want it more 3D. Kind of a taller sound. Quite like that. Neutral, soft, warm, or punchy for your bass characteristics. Neutral. Punchy. Definitely don't want punchy. I'll go with warm. So now this is my personalized sound profile. Let's compare it to the original. Cool. And then it goes back to your normal music and we'll just play with that new sound profile. And the thing is, is everyone has their own preferences. It's just the way we work. In fact, your preferences can change day to day based on your mood, based on the weather, a lot of different things. So that's why I always like to test with flat EQ because that's what the sound engineers have decided sounds the best for the most people and according to the most uh, true to recording type of sounds. But I, typically I like to change EQs a little bit when I'm driving for most systems. So I like how Mercedes customizes that just for you. All right, enough of that. We're gonna have to restart our track here soon. Audio inputs in the EQS. Let's see, you do have, well, we should double check on radio, I guess, because you never know anything with this car. Radio. Looks like no AM, so just FM and Sirius XM satellite radio. Better turn that off before we get demonetized. Bluetooth, USB-C ports, support for wireless and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Some, <clears throat> where are we here? Some online music streaming abilities. What does it come up with? Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, and Tidal. Now that is pretty sweet. I like seeing support for all that. I wonder if I could actually get my hi-fi music right through Amazon Music, but if not, I could always use Tidal. I like having that streaming built in. And the USB, which I was showing you, didn't work earlier. So that's good. I like having those online music things as long as it is indeed providing lossless playback. That's that's a big thing for me because you don't have any sort of 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. You don't have any sort of disc player. So if you're going to have issues with USB, you better be able to do lossless through streaming. For audio controls in the EQS, you've got a volume clicker here. Now, interestingly, you can't slide it. And that really frustrates me because pretty much any car that you've got volume here in the center, you want to be able to roll it if it's a knob or, or Mercedes old style, you could roll it real good. I don't like having to jam this piece of junk plastic right here, loose thing, just to adjust my volume. I I'd like to at least be able to slide my finger back and forth like you can here on, on that. It's very hard to get it pinpoint exactly where you want, but you can at least, no, just can you can't tap it. This one you can't tap or else it mutes the song. And then my music stopped. This one you can't slide. So it, there's, a, there's a discrepancy there. It's like, okay, do you, you want me to slide here? Be only going to click here. It's it's very discombobulated. Technically, you can also reach up on the screen here and drag it back and forth, which you might find to be the easiest way to do it. Although you can't tap, oh, come back. You can't tap it this way. You have to slide it. Very frustrating to me. Track selection, you're pretty much screwed. You can't do it here, and you can't do it here unless you're on the proper screen. So you pretty much have to go into your media screen on the, on the big touch screen there and click around. I don't like that. But I'm going to get this stuff away and get out on the road. If you do want to see more on this very busy infotainment system, check the link in the description. Right after this, I'm going to do a little infotainment walkthrough. So hopefully I'm not here all night. Let's get out on the road.
amount of power and crispness and accuracy that Mercedes-Benz and Burmester have gotten into this system is incredible. I'm so impressed and satisfied with it. it. It sounds great, it really does. You listen to a song like this and you're like, oh man, this a lot of things could go wrong. This could sound really bad. And you would almost excuse it. I mean, yes, this is an SL, it's a $200,000 car, it should, everything should be good about it, but yeah, it's a convertible, it's a sports car. You'd, you'd understand if things weren't coming through super well because they had other priorities. But not the case with this. I mean, it really sounds great. I don't have a single critique. I have it on the driver's mode. I have completely flat EQ, surround turn off, and I this is an excellent sound for me. So this next song, we're gonna turn the bass all the way up and see how this thing sounds. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long to get to the bass settings while driving here. Safety first, gents. I mean, Mercedes has always had impressive sound systems and their Burmesters are usually near the top. I just didn't expect it for this sort of car. They really put in a remarkably high quality audio system. I love when I listen to audio systems that I, I just wouldn't change anything. I have no complaints. This thing sounds awesome. And it's getting an S. It is an S tier sound system. I love it. You'll love it. Wouldn't change a thing. Very, very nice job, Mercedes-Benz and Burmester. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the SL63, check the links in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.